All right, today we're going to work on the 3.7 quadratic inequalities. So first of all, quadratic inequalities are inequalities that can be written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. And we have one of these four inequality symbols, either less than or greater than, or less than or equal to or greater than or equal to zero. Those are quadratic inequalities. Okay, inequalities, one of the four symbols. And we have a quadratic, so a is not zero. And we're going to learn to solve those today. So I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step process that we go through to do this. And we're going to, first of all, find the zeros of our quadratic. So once we have it in the right form, where we're comparing the quadratic to zero, we find the zeros of the quadratic. So the first thing we do is find the zeros. And we do that either by factoring. That's the preferred method. Preferred method is factoring because it's quickest and easiest. And we'll review factoring. We're going to use the box method. If factoring doesn't work, because it won't always work, we can't factor everything nicely. So if factoring doesn't work, we have the quadratic formula. All right, so if you can't find a factorization, we will find the zeros of the quadratic by using the quadratic formula. Now remember that when we have ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, the solutions to that are negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, that whole thing, divided by 2a. So we have the quadratic formula that we can use to find the zeros. Second thing we're going to do, once we have the zeros of our quadratic, we are going to graph those zeros on a number line. <clears throat> so we will then graph the zeros on the number line. And if we have an inequality symbol like a greater than or a less than, where there's no equal sign involved, remember that on the number line, we leave an open circle. If, on the other hand, we have an inequality that has an equal sign with it, either a greater than or equal to or a less than or equal to, remember those are our four inequality symbols that we typically work with we will use a closed circle. All right. Closed, open. All right, third thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find the solution intervals and we're gonna do that with a sign chart, positives and negatives. We're also going to talk about how you could use a test point. And if we don't talk about the test points today, we'll talk about them sometime soon. Or sometime in the future. Now you might have only one solution interval. Or you might have more than one. So we'll put intervals. Find the solution intervals. There might be more than one. And the fourth and final thing is you're going to write your solution using interval notation. So you'll graph them on the number line, and then we'll write the solution in interval notation. So last thing we're going to do is write the solution using interval notation. All right, and hopefully you guys remember interval notation from last year and from what we've reviewed of it this year. All right, so we're going to go through this process with the examples that we have on this paper. So I'm going to go ahead and flip to the examples. So our directions are solve the following quadratic inequalities. Represent the range of solutions in terms of intervals on the number line. 
In other words, we want you to show us a graph of the solutions on the number line. And we also want you to write the solutions with interval notation. So make sure you do interval notation for your solution. We'll talk about how that looks. So our first example is solve x squared plus x minus 2 is less than 0. So the first thing we need to know is notice we have the 0. We need that 0, right? That 0 has to be there. So you compare your quadratic to 0. This only works if we're comparing to 0. So you got to have a 0. All right? We've got a less than 0. Remember, less than 0 means negative. And the first thing we're going to do once we have it in the right form, so we've got the 0, we're going to find the zeros of the quadratic. So this quadratic right here, what are its zeros? Okay? Um, we're going to factor it. So we're going to use the box method. Oh, we've got a times c. Let me find that first. a times c is negative 2. I need to find two numbers that multiply to create negative 2 and have a sum of 1. Right? Because b is 1. So we're going to look for two numbers that have a product of negative 2 and a sum of 1. Let's see. Positive 1 and negative 2? Nope. How about negative 1 and positive 2? That'll work, right? Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. And negative 1 plus 2 is 1. Yep, that'll work. Okay, so we're going to do our little box. Remember the first term gets the first square. Last term gets the last square. And my 1x gets split into a negative x and a 2x. Then we find the greatest common factor for each row. Alright, let's change it up just, just a little bit. For the top row, the greatest common factor here is an x. x squared and negative x have a common factor of x. Bottom row, they're both divisible by 2. Right? Okay, let's do the columns. First column, there's an x. Second column, there's a negative 1. All right, we've got our factorization. Check it. Make sure you check it. x times x is x squared. x times negative 1 is negative x. x times 2 is 2x. And 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. When I add those four things up, I get x squared plus x minus 2. Okay, it checks out. So we've got our factorization. We've got x minus 1 times x plus 2 is less than 0. The zeros of this are going to happen at x equals 1. So I need to find out when these factors are equal to 0. Those will be the zeros of our quadratic. x equals 1. And x equals negative 2. Now remember, I, my next step is to put these on the number line. So I've got my number line over here. I'm going to put them on the number line, but I'm going to use open circles. Why are they open circles? Because we have a less than. There's no equal sign with this, so we leave them open. So we have to figure out how we're going to do our number line exactly here. I think I'm going to count, well, let me start with a zero here. And then I'm going to count by, eh, let's do halves. One half, one. That's why I can write all the numbers in here. I'll just go that far. That's good enough. So this would be negative 1. This would be negative 2. This would be negative 3. And I think we have enough. Um, we're going to put an open circle at positive 1. We're going to put an open circle at negative 2. Now what we have done is we have split the number line into three regions. Three intervals, right? We have split it into three intervals. Okay? So I'm just going to do some dividing. I've got three intervals. I've got one over here, one in between my zeros, and one to the right of my x equals 1. So let's talk about how this works. We're going to do a sign chart, and I want you to understand that when we look at the factor x minus 1, OK, 
Okay, I'm just going to write this up here at the top. X minus 1. When is it negative? It's going to be negative when X is less than 1. Add 1 to both sides of that. It's going to be less than 0 or negative when X is less than 1. What about my factor X plus 2? When is it going to be negative? It's going to be negative when X is less than negative 2. When is it less than 0? When X is less than negative 2. That's when it's negative. Okay, so I want you to notice that the factors are going to do their switching at negative 2 and at positive 1. So on the left side of negative 2, I'm going to write down the sign of my factors. So I have an x minus 1 and I have an x plus 2. And then I have the product of x minus 1 and x plus 2. Okay, so my x minus 1. Where is he negative? He's negative. That factor is negative over here in this interval. In this interval, it doesn't do its switching until x equals 1. Look at that. So over here, it's going to be positive. Okay, x plus 2. It's going to switch at negative 2. It's going to be negative over here in this interval. When x is less than negative 2, x plus 2 is less than 0, which means negative, right? So it does its switching at negative 2. Now that factor is positive, and it remains positive. And you can test numbers as well. If you put in a number like x equals negative 3, negative 3 take away 1 is negative 4. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Both of those factors are negative in this interval over here. Okay? The product then, a negative times a negative, is a positive, right? In the middle interval, a negative times a positive is a negative. And in the final interval, positive times positive is positive. That's how the sign chart works. Now, I want you to notice that what we were looking for is less than zero. We're looking for where that product is negative. The only place that that is happening is in the middle interval where the product is negative. We're looking for where it's less than zero, where it's negative. Okay? Less than zero, remember, means negative. I need to have some room here for my... Um, you can write it over here if you want. Less than zero means negative. You need to make that have that connection. Okay, so what we're looking at is we're looking at a solution interval that is between, this is my next step, right? Find the solution intervals. I'm looking for the negatives. This is what I want. I want the negatives. So it's going to be everything between negative 2 and positive 1. Okay? And the other numbers... Greater than 1, numbers greater than 1 are not going to work. They're going to make a positive product. Numbers less than negative 2 are not going to work. They're going to make a positive product as well. So the way we're going to write this is interval notation. Remember that we use parentheses for less than and greater than. Or in other words, the open circle corresponds to a parenthesis. A closed circle would correspond to a bracket. We don't have brackets here. We have open circles. Okay? which means the parentheses. Open circles are parentheses, closed circles are brackets. Remember that from interval notation. This is the solution we're looking for. It looks like an ordered pair, but it's not. It's all x values between negative 2 and positive 1. Now, there is um, another idea that we'll talk about, but I think we'll wait and talk about that a little bit later. We're going to continue with the sign chart idea. Um, and here in a minute, I'll show you another technique. All right, so example two. We're going to do 3x squared minus 16x plus 5 is less than or equal to 0. Notice we have the 0. We have to have that 0. This time we still need negative, but we're going to have closed circles this time because we have the equal 0 part. Okay, notice the 0. It has to be there. You don't have a 0, create one by moving things. Um, all right, we're going to go ahead and we're going to factor. So we're going to do our a times c. Notice I don't have a GCF. Look for one. If you have one, get rid of it. We don't have a GCF. 3 times 5 is 15. I need two numbers that multiply to create 15, and they add up to our negative 16. Well, 1 and 15 are going to work. Well, they need to be both negative, don't they? Negative 1 and negative 15. 
So then we will create our box. First term gets the first square. Last term gets the last square. Oops, that's a positive 5. And the middle term gets split into two pieces, a negative 1x and a negative 15x. We're going to find the greatest common factor for each row and column. So for the top row, it's x. These two guys right here. All right, for the bottom row, it's negative 5. For the first column, it's 3x. And for the second column, it's negative 1. So our factorization, and double check it, you do have the option or the capability. I'm checking it real quickly. I want to find out when this is less than or equal to 0. So f I need to find the zeros. Where is it equal to 0? Okay, it's equal to 0. Remember, that's our first step is find the zeros. We're almost there. Take each of the factors and set them equal to 0. So this one we're going to add 1 and divide by 3. 3x equals 1. Divide both sides by 3. x would be 1 third. Add 5 to both sides. Over here we get x equals 5. Okay. So those are the zeros of my quadratic. And I'm going to put those on my number line. Now I'm going to do some fancy counting here. Um, I think I'm going to count by 1 third to make it easy on myself. Is that, am I going to have enough room for that? Let me find out. So I put my zero here, then one third, two thirds, three thirds, four thirds, five thirds, six thirds, seven thirds, eight thirds, nine thirds, ten thirds, eleven thirds, twelve thirds, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen thirds. Oh, I could have actually moved everything over a little bit further and gone into the negatives. Oh, that's fine. We don't have to. Uh, actually, maybe I will. Maybe I'll move it over just a little bit. So we're splitting it into thirds. So I need to go there. So there's one third, two thirds, yep. Okay, notice how many marks are in between. There's three. Here's two. Here's one. And then my zero. Let me double check and make sure those are all good. One thirds, two thirds, three thirds, four thirds, five thirds, six thirds, seven thirds, eight thirds, nine thirds, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yep, 15 thirds. And back here we have a six, right? Okay, perfect. That'll work. This time we're using closed circles because of the equal sign on the inequality, right? So we're going to have a closed circle at one-third. There's my one-third. Thanks, eighth grade math, for showing us how to plot things on the number line. And there's five on the number line. Okay. All right. So we're going to, oops, I don't want that. Oh. We're going to um, do a sign chart. Let's split it up a little bit. Zoom, zoom, zoom. OK, I really don't need to draw down below like I did up here, do I? Or we can, either way. All right, so we will look at our factors. 3x minus 1, the x minus 5, and then the product. OK? I don't think I have room to write it in. So what is the product of the two? OK, so 3x minus 1, it's going to do its switching at x equals 1 third. If you pick a number less than one third, that factor is going to be negative. Think about it. If you put in a zero, three times zero is zero. Take away one is negative one. But at one third, it switches to a positive and remains positive. X minus five. It's going to be positive after we get to five, right? But not until then. So if you put in a zero for X, you get negative five. It's a negative. If you put in a one, it's still negative. It's not until we get to 5 that it actually switches, right? 
we put in a six, six take away five is a positive one. The product over here is gonna be positive. In the middle, it's gonna be negative. And over here, it's gonna be back to positive, okay? And what do I want? I want negative again. So I want the stuff in the middle. So we're gonna just identify as our solution all of the numbers between one third and five, including the one third and the five this time, right? So how are we gonna write this with interval notation? That's our final thing. We use the square brackets to indicate that we include the endpoints. So we're going from one third to five and using the square brackets to indicate that we have the closed circles, which means those endpoints are part of the solution set. Okay, and that is our solution to number two. Let's go on to number three. Now I'm gonna change the direction of the inequality on this one because we need some examples of inequalities that go the other way. So notice on this one, I want you to write in a greater than or equal to. We're gonna switch that one. We need some that go the other direction. So we're gonna do this one as a greater than or equal to. So on this one, I don't have a zero over here. So I gotta create a zero. So we're gonna add a three to both sides. Remember with inequalities, we can do the same thing to both sides, except if we ever multiply both sides by a negative, the inequality has to flip. Or if we ever divide both sides by a negative, the inequality has to flip. Okay, so this one, we're gonna look at x squared minus four x plus three is greater than or equal to zero, right? We did, we just, I changed that to a greater than or equal to because I wanted to do a different type of example. So assume this was the problem we were starting with, greater than or equal to, All right? So now we're gonna do some factoring. So we're gonna do our A times C, which is three. We're gonna look for two numbers that multiply to create negative three, have a sum of negative four. Negative one, negative three, they're gonna work. We're gonna draw our box and I don't have a lot of room so I'm gonna draw the box over here or down underneath. I know you guys have a little room down below as well. Um, or you can draw it over here. Wherever you've got room. So we're gonna do x squared and three. First term gets the first square, last term gets the last square. Middle term splits into two pieces. Find the greatest common factor for the top row, for the bottom row, for the first column, for the second column. Okay, back to the first row. We have an X in common. Second row, three, but I need to take the negative because there's a negative there. First column, X. Second column, negative one. Okay, double check your factorization. We're gonna factor that as x minus one times x minus three. And I wanna know when that's greater than or equal to zero. The zeros of this quadratic are gonna be x equals one and x equals three. When we put those on a number line, we're gonna make them solid or closed circles, right? So I'm gonna start with my zero right about here. And since I have plenty of space, I think I'm gonna count by like, yeah, let's do one, two, three. That's far enough. Okay, so we're gonna put a closed circle at one. We're gonna put a closed circle at three. And then we're going to notice that those two zeros split my number line into three intervals, okay? We've split the number line into three intervals. We're gonna take a look at the factors, x minus one, x minus three, and then the product, 
x minus 1 times x minus 3. And we're going to see what happens. Let's see. So the factor x minus 1, it does its switching at 1. When is it less than 0? When x is less than 1. When is it greater than 0? When is it positive, in other words? When x is greater than 1. Right? So notice this first one switches at x equals 1. The x minus 3, it's going to do its switching at 3. So it's going to be negative here, here, and not switch until I get to 3. Like if I put in a 4, 4 take away 3 is 1. But if I put in a 2, 2 take away 3 is negative 1. So when I'm in the middle, that x minus 3 is less than 0. It's negative, right? Uh, and then the product. Negative times negative will turn into a positive. Positive times negative will be a negative. And lastly... Well, let me go through that again. Negative times negative is positive. Positive times negative is negative. And then positive times positive is a uh, positive. Notice this time I want the positive. I want the greater than or equal to zero. I've already got the equal zero. That's the one and the three. I want to know where it's positive. So it's positive over here. And over here. Going all the way to the left from 1, and then going all the way to the right from 3. Now, let's review how that works with interval notation. We go negative infinity, because we went forever to the left, to 1. We use a bracket because of the closed circle. Then we do a union symbol. We take a little break. We pick up again at x equals 3. And we go to infinity. And that's our solution for problem number three. Okay. All right. Um, I want to point out something else about this one that's going to help us on the next two problems because the next two we're going to do a little bit differently. So remember, we have been looking at quadratics. If we have y equals x squared minus 4x plus 3, and I were to graph that, I know that's a quadratic that opens upward, and we just found the zeros of that quadratic. They are at 1 and 3. Okay? The parabola that goes through those points has its vertex a little bit below here somewhere, and then it goes up. So I want you to notice that for this quadratic, between 1 and 3, the y values are less than 0. In other words, x squared minus 4x plus 3 is less than 0 in here, right? This is where it's negative, where it's down in the negatives. But over here on this piece and over here on this piece, x squared minus 4x plus 3 is greater than 0. Okay? So translation. When your parabola is above the x-axis, your quadratic function is going to have values that are, I should point to this, greater than 0. When you're below the x-axis, your quadratic is going to give values that are less than 0. Okay, And we're going to use that in our next couple of problems because they're not going to factor. We're going to have to use the quadratic formula. So let's go into those. So example number four. Once again, uh, we don't have enough examples of the greater than, so I am going to ask you to switch this one around. Okay, so we're switching this one around. We're going to do it with a greater than zero. All right? And I think I'm actually going to move this down a little bit because I want some room up above to do some work. So... We're going to switch this to a greater than, so just switch it over, okay? Just switch that one to a greater than. Make sure you can read it. We're going to switch that one to a greater than. All right, so um, we've got the zero over here on the right-hand side. That's good. Um, we're going to see if we can factor it. Do we have a GCF? Nope, 5 and 2, nope, no common factors. 
So we're going to do a times c, 2 times 5 is 10. I need to find two numbers that multiply to create 10 and have a sum of 8. All right? Sum of 8. Uh, we don't have a lot of ways of getting 10. 1 and 10, 2 and 5. And they're both going to have to be positive to get a positive sum, right? Oh, sums are wrong. 11 and 7. So this one doesn't factor. It's not going to factor for us. Doesn't factor. So we're going to use the quadratic formula. So remember what the quadratic formula says. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So if it doesn't factor, you're going to have to use something else, and we're going to use the quadratic formula because this one doesn't factor. Does not factor, at least not with really nice numbers. Does not factor. Okay, so we'll use the quadratic formula. Notice what we have. A is 2. B is 8. C is 5, right? And we're going to plug them into the formula. So x equals negative b, so the opposite of 8, plus or minus the square root of 8 squared, there's my b squared, minus 4 times a is 2 times c, which is 5, all over 2 times 2. Now at this point, we're going to grab a calculator and we're going to make it do some work for us. 8 squared is 64. So just plug it into the calculator. 8 squared minus 4 times 2 times 5. And see what you get. I'm going to plug it in right now. Calculator says it is... 24 as well because 64 take away 40 2 times 5 is 10 10 times 4 is 40 64 take away 40 is 24 all of that divided by 4 now normally what we would do is we would simplify that radical square root of 24 we'd simplify it using a factor tree and all that but to put these numbers on the number line we're going to want decimal approximation so we're going to grab the calculator or Keep that calculator right there and make it work again. We're going to do negative 8 plus the square root of 24 divided by 4. Just enter it into your calculator like that, basically. And that one's going to come out to negative 0 0.775. If we round it to three decimal places, or you can round it to two, that was fine as well. I don't care. And the other one, if I do negative 8 minus the square root of 24 over 4, we get negative 3.225. That would be the negative 8 minus the square root of 24 over 4. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to... Mm, plot those on the number line. They're a little interesting, aren't they? So I need to go into the negative. So I'm going to put my zero right here, I think. And I'm just going to count. Oh, those are almost quarters, right? 0. 0.75 is three quarters and 0. 0.25 is one quarter. So we're almost a quarter. So let me count by four. Do I have enough room to do that? So one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths. There's going to be my negative one. One fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths. There would be my negative 2. 1, 2, 3, 4. There would be my negative 3. Yep, we got room to do this. And then 1, 2, 3, 4. There would be my negative 4. Okay, so negative 0.775. Oh, are we doing open circles or are we doing closed this time? We're doing open, right? There's no equal sign, so these are going to be open circles. So let's do the open circles. We're going to do one at negative 0.775. So just a teensy bit past, I like that word teensy, just a little bit past negative 3 fourths. Barely past, right? Barely, barely. It's so close we could almost circle that one, right? 
we'll go just a teeny bit past, a little tiny bit past. There's our negative 0.775. And then we'll go almost to negative 3 and 1 quarter. So it's going to be right there. Okay. And we're looking for greater than 0. Huh. You know what? We're going to streamline this one. Instead of doing a sign chart, which we really can't do because we don't have it factored, we're going to think about what we talked about. If we looked at the graph of y equals 2x squared plus 8x plus 5, that graph would be a quadratic, a parabola, I should say, a parabola that opens upward. So it would come from up above, come down here, turn somewhere in between, go through that point. And what we're looking for is where it is greater than 0. Where is it above? I need to know when it's above. Where is the parabola above the x-axis? And you can think of this as being your x-axis. It really is. We've put those x-intercepts on there. They're the zeros of the function, right? So where is it above? It's going to be above over here and over here. So it's above on the ends, the left end and the right end. Okay? You can leave that in or you can take it out. I don't care. I guess we could leave it in. It's above over here and over here. It's going to be below in between, right? But we have to finish it off by writing down our interval notation. So we go from negative infinity to negative 3. This time we're going to use parentheses because the circle is not closed. Parentheses means we do not include the endpoints as part of our solution. They would make it equal to 0, and I'm not allowed to do that. I have to have it greater than 0. And then, whoops, it's not negative 3. What was it? Good thing I caught that. Negative 3.225. You can round it to hundreds if you want. You could even round it to tens. I don't care. I'm rounding to thousands because I want to go far with that. Okay, so then we go break time between negative 3.225 and negative 0.775. So we pick up again there using the parentheses. Notice the parentheses, not the square bracket. Okay, square bracket means we have the closed circle, which means that point satisfies the inequality, but in this case, they don't because we've got greater than, right? Strictly greater than zero. And we go all the way to infinity. Okay, one more problem. Example number five. Notice I do not have a zero over here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make it a zero on the right-hand side. So we're going to make x squared plus 10x plus 8 is less than or equal to zero x squared plus 10x plus 8 is less than or equal to 0. And I do not have, hmm, let's see, what's a times c? It's 8. I need two numbers that multiply to create and have 8 and have a sum of 10. Ugh. 1, 8, 2, and 4. That's all we got, right? A sum of 9, a sum of 6. Oh, it's not going to factor does not factor. So we're going to use the quadratic formula. So we'll do x equals negative b, so negative 10, plus or minus the square root of 10 squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. But a is 1, so that's going to be all over 2. And then we're going to simplify the discriminant. Remember, the number under the radical is called the discriminant. We're going to do the square root of, let's see, grab a calculator. That's 100 minus 32, which is 68. And then over 2. And instead of simplifying the radical like we normally would, normally we'd take the 68 and we'd write it as 2 times 34. We'd take the 34 and write it as 2 times 17. We'd simplify the radical. You need to remember how to do that. But today we're just going to find decimal approximations. Um, I probably should, instead of using equal signs, do the little squiggly things that mean we've approximated it. You don't have to, but I'm going to because it's more 
precise. So approximately, so we do that's on the calculator, negative 10 plus the square root of 68. You know, best way to do it on the calculator, negative 10 plus the square root of 68. Do that calculation, you get negative 1.7537 and so on, but then I need to divide that by two. So do negative 10 plus the square root of 68, push your enter button, then divide that by two. So you literally just do the divide by two and it will take that last calculation and divide it by two. So we get negative 0 0.877. Or let's time, let's round it to hundreds. Negative 0 0.88. Yeah, you know what? I'll do thousands just to be consistent. Negative 0 0.877. That's one of them. The other one we're going to do negative 2 minus the square root of 68. Hit enter. And then immediately divide it by, so let me do this. Negative 8 minus, or oops, not negative 8. Negative 10. I didn't say negative 8. Negative 10 minus the square root of 68, and then divide that by 2. That comes out to negative 9.123. Interesting. Okay, we almost got to negative 10. All right, so I'm going to work on my number line here. I'm going to start with 0 way over here, and then I'm just going to count by... Um, I think I can count by, I think I have enough to go negative 1, negative, let's do negative 1 right there, negative 2 right there, negative 3 right there, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, negative 9. Yep, we made it. Okay, so what do we have? We have negative 9.123, so we're just past negative 9, just barely. Are we doing open or close this time? We're doing closed because there's an equal sign with our inequality, right? So less than or equal to. So we'll do negative 9.123, and then we'll do negative 0.877. That's going to be closer to negative 1 than it is to negative 1 half. We'll put a dot right there-ish. Okay. And then, that's a really big closed dot. Let me make that a little smaller. And then we're looking at everything in between. Let's think about why we're in between. So quadratic that we're looking at is x squared plus 10x plus 8. It's going to be above the x-axis over here and over here, right? It's going to be below the x-axis in the middle. We're not trying to draw an exact replica of what that problem should look like. We're just getting a visual of what it would do. It would open upward, right? y equals x squared plus 10x plus 8. Here's my quadratic. But this time I want to know where it's below. Less than or equal to 0 is below the x-axis. I want to know when the y values are less than zero, when they're negative. So I want it below the x-axis, okay? Below the x-axis. That's going to happen in the middle. So my solution interval, there is only one, it's going to be in the middle, okay? So graphing-wise, that's what my interval looks like. With interval notation, we're going to have to use the square brackets to indicate that the points or the circles are closed. We'll do negative 9.123. And on the right end, so remember with interval notation, what's the left end? And then what's the right end? And we are finished.